You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin. And you know, here at America Trends, we love our teen entrepreneurs. We love when they start early. And one of the women who helps facilitate that is friend of mine, friend of the show, Sarah Hernholm, founder of WIT. Whatever it takes, we gotta do whatever it takes, right? Sarah, welcome back to America Trends. Thanks for having me. You know I love to be here. We love having you. Sorry you couldn't be in studio today, but I'm glad you're zooming in. And so first, tell me how things are going. What do you, how does South by Southwest go this year? And how is WIT going? Well, I really have no complaints. I am enthusiastic uh, because the organization's been doing a lot more hackathons around the country which is really exciting because that means we're bringing young people together to work together in person to solve the problems that are faced in their community and seeing young people come together and engage with one another and then pitch their solutions. It just, it's what they need. They need to be using their voices and they need to be in social situations where they can meet new people and activate that entrepreneurial mindset. So I'm happy to report that our hackathons are going strong and we've got a few more this summer, but that's the, what I'm really excited about right now and what we all are excited about over here at WIT. That's, that's pretty awesome. Is it cool to see you know, all the different cities? I mean, do people show up in different ways or things they talk about are different based on where they are located in the country or are you seeing that it's all pretty similar when they all get together? Well, the things that are similar are that everyone is a, it's a little uncomfortable the first time that you're meeting people that you've never met before or that might be going to a rival high school. That's always interesting. Mm. Uh, so those things come up and just different, right? I mean, young people don't always mix with kids from different parts of their city or different schools. You think about how we grew up. Maybe we didn't hang out with kids that went to schools that were even five miles away just because that wasn't what was how we, that's not how we did it. And when we do these hackathons, we're inviting young people from around the city that we're working in to come together. And the things that they have in common are that they all are concerned about a trifecta of issues. I'll say one of the top things that they're concerned about is their mental health mm. and adults what it feels like to them, lack of concern about their mental health, or uh, yeah, I'll leave it there, lack uh. of concern about the mental health. We can talk more about that if you'd like. Something else that they're concerned about would be education and equity, them realizing that based on where you live or you know what neighborhood you're in, that determines what kind of education that you're getting. So that's always interesting to hear their opinions on that. And then dealing with the homeless issue, which is mm. big in most of the cities that we go to. So those are the things that are on their mind. There's a few other things that they tackle, but those are the top ones. So yeah, I do want to segue into mental health topic because it is Mental Health Awareness Month. We've been talking a lot on this show this month about ways um, social media in particular is affecting kids. And I think with teenagers, um, it's, it's the pressure, it's stress, it's college. Colleges are so hard to get into now, and I'm in the midst of this right now with my two teenage daughters. So talk to me about what you're hearing as far as, you know, is it social media, is it college, is it politics? What are the things that are stressing people out or teens out the most? Well, I think we have created a day for them, a school day for them that not many adults would sign up for themselves. And the pressure that we put on our young people starting at 7 a.m. and ending at 11 p.m. or past midnight because of a homework load is unnecessary. And teens have said this, they have shared this concern. And what's disheartening to them is that no matter how many times they vocalize it, they're told by the people who don't have to participate in that day that they should just deal with it or maybe meditate more. Or, and it's like, I'm all for that. Like I'm all for meditation and tapping and doing different tools and using different tools to help you with your mental health. We encourage our young people to move their bodies every day or even do an active service for people. All of those things help your mental health. But those are wonderful things for young people to learn how to do. But ultimately what we have to look at is what are we, putting on our young people 
based on the schedule and demands that we know aren't really needed when they're out in the quote real world. Um, and you know, you probably deal with, or I'm assuming that the kids that you come in contact with through WIT are may, uh, high functioning, high achievers, maybe even overachievers. I don't know. I'm assuming they are driven. I know I've met mm -hmm. many of them on the show and they are mm -hmm. incredibly talented, smart kids. Do you see, though, that there is something innately in them, like they want to drive, they want to be entrepreneurs at this young age? Is that driven from within them? Is that parent-driven? Do you see a difference when you talk to these kids? Well, I think what we're lucky about over here at WIT is that the young people that we get to work with over here are young people that are excited to do the work that they're doing on their business or their idea because WIT has provided them the space and place to pursue something that they're actually really interested in. And I think everyone watching will know that if you do something that you enjoy doing, the time flies a lot, you know, and we are willing to dive deeper into understanding something if we're interested in it. And so at WIT, we get to see people, young people get excited about learning. And so are they more driven? I mean, maybe but i think they're just actually more interested in what they get to work on hmm. and we see that happen even at our hackathons where a young person is put together with a group of people six to eight people they're tackling an issue they're coming up with a solution they're putting together a pitch deck they're pitching it at the end of the day for a thousand dollar prize and college credit and they're they're doing it i mean and they aren't they are engaged and it is a rush for me as an adult to, to see young people excited about the learning. And that's what I think it really is, Mary. I mean, at WIT, we aren't, we're not trying to attract the child who's just trying to put something on their resume or yeah, I was get gonna ask you about top that. school. Now that's not interesting to us, to me personally or to the organization as a whole, because we know that what we're trying to do over here is work with the whole child that will then eventually have them grow up to be a contributing member of society who is well adjusted, who has a high emotional intelligence. So those things aren't connected to a GPA or where you go to college. Mm. I love that. Got two questions there. So are there tips that you can give me personally and other parents at home and other, you know, maybe educators who are in this space where they're dealing with teenagers to help mitigate that, that, that stress that's on them and to, you know, get in touch with them and open those lines of communication about what is stressing them out? Well, a few things come to mind as I hear you say that. One in connection to the college process is just to continue to remind yourself and your team that you are in the driver's seat, that you are the customer and you are going out there and you're looking for the place that's the right fit for you, not who wants me, who wants me, who wants me? I hope oh. they want me, I hope they want me. Instead, be like, where do we want to go? Where do we want to invest our money in? Are they going to meet our needs? Do they have the type, type of culture that we are interested? Do they share our values? Let's go walk on that campus and see how we feel. We just have to switch the I mindset, love that. right? Yeah. So, and then that makes it a lot more fun. So when you sit down to think about where do you want to go to school, Think about, let's go, let's think about our top three things that we're looking for and do they have it? Not do I have what they want. I mean, I understand why that's important at times, but there's, we just have to flip it. It's your investment. It's your money. It's yeah. your time. It, it, are they going to give you what it is that you really need to be successful in life? Will it be a good return on your investment? So that makes it a little bit more fun and puts you in the power move, the power seat, which I always think is important. And I then the other thing when it comes to checking in on anyone in your life, I think there's little things that you can do. We do this at WIT. We do something called high-low dump. We just ask them in the beginning of every class or when we connect with any of our teams, what's the high of your day? What's the low of your day? And is there anything you just want to like dump, anything you want to get off your chest that you're just been thinking about? And then you go first sometimes. And it's really important that as adults that we model what it means to share that not everything goes great in our lives either. You know, mm -hmm. we've got some stuff too. And then the, the important thing with that high-low exercise, it's active listening skill 
And so the parents out there, the adults out there, do not cut them off and start talking over them and providing a solution to them. I have to work on that it. all the time to not offer solution because as a parent, you want to fix it, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, quickly before so, we let you go, Sarah, I want to find out what you have going this, this summer. Can kids take classes with you? Yes, they can. But first, I want to say, Mary, always ask your child, are you open to feedback? Are you open to a solution after they share it? Put, again, put them in the power seat to be able to do that and then chime in. Okay, so summer stuff, yes. I'm actually going back into the virtual classroom July 24th, the week of July 24th, running a program. Would love to have some uh, young people uh, watching join us there. You can apply and online. They can go to doingwit.org, right, is yes. your website, and at doingwit on Instagram. Follow Sarah, following doingwit, or wit, uh, because you're gonna get a lot of tips and tricks for your teenager. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Sarah, and we'll be back with more America Trends right after this quick break.